What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation. How are you doing today? Oh, um, uh, yeah, welcome, uh, Herbert and uh, uh, Akira. I want to share with us um, this about being on the law side. The reason being that um, people that believe in God believe they are on the on the inside and because they're on, on his side they are saved they are better than others so they see others as unbelievers people doomed to hell fire they will you know misfortune will before them bad thing will be happening to them but these people divorce themselves from reality that actually the main people or most people that are suffering that are also people that believe in god People that worship the same God they worship, people that are on the on the side of that their God. So, and also another reason I want to share this is people talking about, you know, know the God they worship and uh, the, the because they simply believe. To be on the lost side, which I will show you using the their Bible. It doesn't mean you just believe in God. No, it goes deeper than that. And also we show you how this thing is actually about black people, about Africans, how they converted us to hate ourselves and killing ourselves as at the moment. But as I also know, our slavery condition is not permanent. Soon we will turn from ourselves to our enemies. No, no, no more loving them, but dealing with them even more than they dealt with us, because we have to free ourselves. Freedom is not what you pray, you 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 receive by praying or by wishing. It's not a gift. Nobody will give you freedom. You have to fight for freedom, because. It is your life and it is your future. As I said in my last video, whatever you are doing is supposed to be for yourself. And when you're talking about for yourself, it means in your next life also. So this is another thing you know you need to know, especially when you say you are waking or you are woke. Okay. It's not a bad belief. It's not, oh, believe there is a next life. No, no. Before you said there is no next life. So there was no life before you were born. That's what you're saying. But it's not true. Life is eternal. Life has no beginning, no ending. And it continues. It continues, you know, in transition. That circle of life which is bed and death. You cannot, nobody know the day they were born and nobody know the day they will die. Mm -mm. You can't tell me this is the day I will die unless you have decided to commit, I mean, to kill yourself, which is your choice, right? But for you to naturally die as you are naturally born, you don't know, okay? So that's the two days. You don't know nothing, but you know, at least you're supposed to know that the same way you sleep and wake up, that's the same way you will die and be born again. Okay, so on the law side is the top, is the title that I want to share with us. And I will use the Bible to open our eyes to welcome to Bible study, as I always do. So read along with me, reason with me and share your thoughts about it. Okay. I'll start uh, from Exodus 32, verse 25, because that's where you will find that word in the Bible, on the law side. In reality, there's no such thing as on the law side. Okay. It says, Moses knew that the people were out of control and that it was Aaron's fault. You see, Moses 
represents a servant of God, right? Somebody that communicates with God. Somebody that God chose to represent God to the people. Why he represents the people to God? But you know, Moses is a fictional character. God is a fictional character. They never existed. But hear this. When he saw that the people were out of control, what happened that made these people out of control? Because they refused to follow the God of Moses. Now, instead of Moses to blame God, because God's supposed to be able to keep these people under control. But the people were not under control. They decided to make their own decision in life. They decided to say, listen, this God you're telling us about, we have not seen it. And even his servant Moses that said, oh, he's going up there, he's coming down, we have not seen him. We can make our own decision. We don't need to keep waiting for Moses. That's how people are supposed to be reasoning. So the people decided to make their own God, following the God or whatever they copied from the Egypt. But you know, it's a story. It never happened. This never happened. There has never been Moses. There have never been Aaron anywhere in this world. Okay, so you say it's Aaron's fault, not God's fault. That's typical of believers or people that believe in God. When things is out of control, when things is not as they like. I, I think I shared that post, I get it from a video shared on our WhatsApp group about the preachers. He said what they call lies are actually the realities they disagree with. They disagree with that reality. They say, no, it's a lie. I don't believe, I know, I know. no, it's not the law, it's not, it's not God's will. The reality they disagree with, and they disagree with every reality, especially when they stand on pulpit or when they go preaching. But in their private life or in the reality, when they face challenges, you see they embrace reality. And, because you cannot have God and reality. God and reality does not go together. Lie and truth does not go together. They are not like light and darkness. They are not like black and white. They are not. They are not real. Okay, say, so, and now they had made fools of themselves in front of their enemies. This is another thing believers believe. They believe, you know, you have to believe in God because of your enemies. Your enemies will deal with you. If you don't believe in God, God will keep you from the enemies. Why the people they call their enemies are not actually their enemies? They are not. They, they become their enemies because they don't believe in their God. So they see them as threats, as enemies that will seduce them to worship another God, to follow another God. So they see them as their enemies. For example, Anyone that believes in God sees me as their enemy. Anyone that believes in Jesus sees me as their enemy. Humanly speaking, they won't say that. They won't even think that. They won't see me like that. But spiritually, uh, religiously, according to their belief, according to their faith, they see me as their enemy. Although their Bible tell them to love their enemies, they, they are praying for bad things to happen to their enemies. Verse 20, so Moses stood at the gate of the camp and shouted, everyone who is on the Lord's side, come over here. As I'm reading this, I say, think. He said, Moses stood at the gate of the camp and shouted. So Bible was written when there was no microphone. <laughs> and now you have microphone. You think what is written when there was no telephone, I mean, no microphone, still applies to you. He stood at the gate of the camp, of the church, of the mosque, of the synagogue, of the temple, of the shrine, and shouted, everyone who is on the Lord's side, come over here. I will stand for God. If you're on the Lord's side, come over here. Another thing you see happening today in the world. People that say they, they, are, they are servants of God or God chose them, if you don't come to them, you are the enemy. You're on the wrong side. They are the ones on the right side. 
I'm standing on the right side of the Lord. <laughs> which side? Which Lord? You need to know that the Lord is the slave owner. And that represents the Arabs and the Europeans to Africans. Africans, anytime you, see, you hear or read God or Lord, especially in the Holy Book, is talking about the Arabs and the Europeans. It's talking about our enslavers. We are still their slaves. Our name can tell you that. Even the languages we speak can tell you that. The schools we attend, the things we are doing today we tell you, uh, can tell you that we are still their enemies. We are not free yet. We are not free people. We still want to live according to their pattern, according to their ways. Their God is our God. Oh, no, I was going through. I saw my old posts. I said that. I said, even the God of Israel is our God also. It's not. We don't have God. There is no God that is our God. Whether you call it the God of your ancestors or the God of your forefathers or the God of your fathers or the God of your people or the God of heaven and earth, whatever God you call it, it's not our God. We don't need God. God is our downfall. God is our doom. God is our waterloo. God is our evil. God is our ignorance. We don't need God. We need knowledge. Then the men of Levi tribe gathered around Moses and he said to them, the Lord God of Israel commands you to strap on your swords. The, 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 the time the Bible was written, there was no gun. It was sword. Nobody used gun. That, they don't know how to make, make gun that time. It was sword and the horse. He said, go through the camp, killing your relative. Pay attention. Those that are on the Lord's side were commanded by God to strap on their sword and go through the camp, killing their relatives, killing their friends, and killing their neighbors. Then the men of Levi tribe followed his orders, and that day they killed about 3,000 people where, where God was watching. They killed about 3,000 men. Moses said to them, you obeyed the Lord and did, did what was right. And oh, do you hear what he says? They did what was right. What is that thing that was right? They killed their, their relatives. They killed their friends and they killed their neighbors. I, I said, and so you have done what, it, what was right. And so you will serve as his priests for the people of Israel. And his priests for the people of Israel. After killing your relatives, after killing your friends, after killing your neighbors, now you are qualified to serve as God's priest for the people that claim to be his chosen people. It was hard for you to kill your own sons and brothers. Read with me again. He said, it was hard for you to kill your own sons and brothers, but... Because you have done that, although it was hard, but you did it because you believe. Because belief makes you a stupid person, a stupid person that can kill his own sons and brothers. And those of you Christians or believers that say you are against human ritual or money ritual, yet you worship a God you believe that sacrifices his own son. You say it's for your sin. Bullshit. It was hard for you to kill your own sons and brothers, but the Lord has blessed you and made you his priest today. Exodus 32, 25 to, 30, uh, to 29. Who is on the Lord's side? Come here, strap, strap your sword. Go in the camp. Kill your relatives. Kill your friends, kill your, your, your neighbors. Because they are not worshiping this God. They don't believe in this God. Kill them. Africans, I want you to know, being on the Lord's side, you must hate and kill yourselves. That's why they gave you God. That's why they gave you Bible. That's why they gave you Quran. That's why they gave you Torah. That's why they gave you Jesus. That's why they gave you Muhammad. 
That's why they gave you Moses to keep you hating and killing yourselves, claiming to be on the Lord's side. That's why you see Africans, everything they said, the Lord give it to them. The Lord did it to, to, for them. All their efforts, all their struggle, all their hustling, all their sources, all their achievement, they ascribe the glory to, to God because they want to be or they claim to always be on the Lord's side when things are working against them. Things they can rise up and fix. You tell them, for you to be my disciple, you have to kill. Like when you read Luke chapter 14, verse 26, it says you have to hate your family members. Then in Luke chapter 19, verse 27, it said, bring those who refuse to uh, let me be their king. Kill them before me. These things are happening in your family. It's, it's happening in your village. It's happening in your neighborhood, wherever you are now. If you have believers there, people that truly believe in God, believe in Jesus, believe in Muhammad, or believe in early book, they naturally hate you and they will kill you when time comes. So I want to show you what being on the law side is actually. Because if you listen to them, they'll be telling you all lies. I mean, the preachers of God, the preachers of Christ, the preachers of um, religion, they will be telling you lies. They won't tell you the truth because they know the truth will scare you away. The law side is the side of jealousy and hate. In Exodus chapter 20, where he said, he they, they, they gave the Ten Commandments. He said, God is a jealous God. He said, I am a jealous God. You all shall have no other God before me. It's me, 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 me. So you must love me and hate other gods. Although I am not the only God, but I am, I am you are God, you are only God. Then other gods, don't worship them. Then you see them saying, there is one God. <laughs> their God tell them there are gods, but he's the only one they should worship. Yeah, these people go about lying and telling you there is one God. And they tell you that devil believe. He said there is one God. Even I think that's uh, James chapter two verse nineteen. How can you say there is one God and devil believe so? When you know in, the, in, in before you the, the New Testament, they have been telling you about other gods. God of Israel say we deal with the gods of Egypt. He said we deal with other gods. He commanded his people don't believe in other gods. Don't worship other gods. Yet you turn around and telling me there is one God. Even the devil believe and tremble. That's stupidity. And that's what happens. When you believe, you tremble. You cannot believe and know. You cannot believe and succeed. You cannot believe and start. You only believe and tremble. Because faith is rooted in fear. Come on. They wrote it even in their book. He said, now, you live by faith. You have to stand. You have to fear. Now you stand by faith. You have to fear. Because if you don't fear, you will lose your ground again. Because it's only fear. That's why they tell you the fear of God is the beginning of their wisdom. They don't have wisdom. All they have is fear of God. And that's what they count as wisdom. There's no wisdom in living in fear of God or having fear of God. No wisdom. There's, you cannot have fear, fear in wisdom or with wisdom. You cannot have it. Also, the side of the Lord is the side of evil. Isaiah 45, verse 7, he said he created evil. Christians or believers have been trying to re re reinterpret it or make it be another thing. No, he said he created evil. He said all the atrocities, he's the one doing it. That's the side of evil. When you say you're on the Lord's side, you are on the evil side. And look around the world and tell me who are the people doing all the evil you're talking about today or you see today is people of God, taste, godly people, righteous people that are doing all that evil. The side of the Lord is side of destruction. In Isaiah 54 verse 16, he said he sent the destroyer to destroy. Yet we say devil is the destroyer. No. If you read your Bible very well, there's no place devil this uh, does kill people 
it is God doing all the killing. God doing it or commanding it to be done is God, not any devil. So the side of God is side of destruction. So when you say destruction will come to me, no, destruction can never come to me. It only goes to people who believe in God. You say his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You did not say uh, unbelievers or uh, woke nation or atheists. No, you say his own people, they are destroyed for lack of knowledge because he created them not to have knowledge. Then they step into knowledge. He chased them away. Then they come back now and he's accusing them of <laughs> being destroyed for lack of knowledge. The man that created them with, without giving them knowledge in the first place or the serpent came. The side of the Lord is side of homicide. As I already quoted like Luke chapter 14 verse 26 and Luke chapter uh, 19 verse 27. is the side of homicide. Another human, another human being, killing another human being. For in the name of God, in the name of Allah, that is the side of the Lord. Muslims killing non-Muslims. Christians hating and killing non-Christians also. That's how Africans become Christians and Muslims. They have to kill us and force those that survive to accept Jesus and Muhammad as their own. Till today, Afri look at Africa. Africa is still suffering from that. The side of the Lord is side of genocide. Wiping away a whole race of people. When they tell you, you repent or you perish, you think it's just preaching. No, that's what they actually did to us. That's how they possess our land, which they call Middle East today. That's how they possess our land, some part of South Africa today. And that's how they're still controlling us mentally today. Our people still living in that fear, repent or perish. In America, you can't go there and hear repent and perish in any street. You can't. You wouldn't even hear any church making noise in any street. It's in Africa. Genocide. First Samuel 15, 3. He says so. He says so. Go and wipe them out. Saul so went there and showed some human, humanity. He, he, he removed Saul and put bloody David there. And David was killing everyone. <laughs> For God. Genocide. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 1 to 2. People that were greater and mightier than them, richer than them, people that have everything, he said, go, destroy them. Show them no mercy. That is on the Lord's side, is the side of genocide. How about meanness? Unkindness. That's the side of the Lord. Job chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Say the Lord, look at the, at, the, at, at the innocent, suffering, unnecessary, and when they die, he laugh at their plight. So whenever somebody says, what is God doing in heaven? I say, he's laughing at his children. He's laughing at those that believe in him because they're stupid. You have not seen this God, and you believe this God can protect you. Now you are dead. Of course, he will be laughing at you. You are stupid to believe that nonsense. The side of the Lord is side of meanness, side of side of unkindness. That's why you can see one individual that believes in God possess the possession that belongs to everyone. Because that's the side of the Lord. They are mean. They see people dying daily. They don't care. They care about their money than those people. And yet they will turn around telling you they're against abortion or they're against murder. They, they, they are evil. Just like their God. The side of the Lord is side of blindness and deafness. Isaiah 42, 19. He said his servants are blind and deaf. And that's, there's no man of God hearing from God. And there's no man of God seeing anything from God. They are blind and they are deaf. And that's why they try to predict by what they see on television or what they hear on the news or what people tell them. There is nothing like God revealing anything to them because there is no God. They are telling you their mind. I like the way uh, Osaka, I think Osaka said that in our WhatsApp group. He said, Afa, Afa, Ucho, Wadibia. He said, when you go to uh, like all these native daughters to consult, 
He said the, the message or the whatever they are telling you is their own mind, what they think. And that's why they ask you questions, just the same way medical doctors work. Medical doctors cannot hear you, but they will ask you questions, what is wrong with you? Then based on what, what they were trained to be doing or what they learned, then they know what type of medication they will prescribe for relief, not for healing. So ministers of God, they are blind, or people that are on the law side, they are blind and they are deaf, according to Isaiah 42, verse 19. Also, the law side is a side of conversion. When you're talking about conversion, you have to invade people, kill them, fight against them to convert them. And that's what they did to us, according to Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. They crossed land and sea and invaded Africa, converted Africans. Look at Africans today. They don't know themselves. All they know is about Israel. All they know is about Europe. All they know is about America. All they know is about Asia. But about Africa, they are zero. Zero. They can travel to Europe, America, Asia, but to travel other parts of Africa to gain knowledge. No, because what they are chasing is money, not knowledge. And money will keep you good slave. Because money is not wealth. For you to have freedom, you must have wealth first. You don't have wealth. So they converted you. They beat them children of hell. So you see them today, they're living their life, living in fear of hell. I don't want to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. It's a side of conversion. They're going about trying to convert, convert people. Receive Jesus Christ's life will be better than you. Oh, Muhammad bullshit, Allah bullshit, God bullshit, Jesus bullshit, all that nonsense. And that's what Africans has become, converted people, people that no longer themselves. They are no longer children of men and women. They are now children of hell, suffering unnecessarily. And the last point I want to make there, the, on the lost side is the side of uselessness. According to Psalm 115, 4 to 8, Gods, whether the God of Israel you call it or whatever God you call it, they have eyes they cannot see, they have mouth they cannot speak, they have nose they cannot smell, they have hands they cannot handle anything, they have legs they cannot walk. They are useless in reality. And every true believer in, that, in any God is useless in reality. The lost side is for stupid people. The lost side is for desperate people. The lost side is for gullible people. And these people are easily taken advantage of. And that's why you see ministers of God exploiting them, taking their time, taking their resources, even their money. No same person, no wise person, no prudent person will go or stay on the lost side. You can't be yourself and be on the lost side. You can't be human and be on the, on the lost side. You have to be stupid claiming to be spiritual. You have to be stupid claiming to be religious. You have to be stupid claiming to be faithful for you to be on the lost side. And for me, as for me, as I live, I reject every God and everything they represent in this time and even in my next life, in this life and in my last life, I reject everything, God. I will never be born in any spiritual or religious family again. I will be born in a Noah's family, people that, 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 that care much about knowledge and putting it to work. Freedom fighters, people that we restore and they recover our heritage. That's the family, my, the, next, the family I will born again. And those of you that are talking about your ancestors, remember, you will again be a newborn baby, whether you like it or not. You can claim whatever you know out of your frustration or out of your whatever, but you, you will become newborn baby. You, when you're talking about unborn children, you're talking about yourself also. You'll be born again. I will never believe or worship any God. 
doesn't matter what, I can never be on the lost side because I've not lost my mind. I mean, uh, my brain is still intact, working. I can never be on the lost side, side of stupidity. No way. I can never. So I'm encouraging you, encouraging you to know that God is evil and you need to trust God so that you can live humanly. Life is great. It's not spiritual. Life is great. It's not religious. Life is great. It's not a gift. Life is great. It's not created. So it's time you stand up, live humanly, enjoy your life. Don't let anyone threaten you with that useless fear of useless God. All right? Enjoy your life. Or what do you call